Andre and Evans, what makes a difference for you guys? Um, what sort of things can, you know, the international press do oh. to support the work you guys are doing on the ground? Unfortunately, um, the agency that I work for doesn't provide security. So you have to <laughs> make it out on your own. Um, the only thing that they actually do nowadays is that uh, is not nowadays is that um to send out your location on WhatsApp wherever wherever you move from neighborhoods to neighborhoods. Um, getting through you know the day in and showing neighborhoods that you're in, you if something goes down, you just have to just sit there calmly because I don't stand out. I mean, I'm I'm part of the I'm easily fit in and uh, easily could hop on a motorcycle and leave. But when you are working with foreign press, you know, foreigners that are with you, it's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's another ball game. Um, like for this week, we we have like uh, new um, visitors in our office and they are foreigners. And then it's hard for them to comprehend, you know, the, the situation on the ground because it's the first time ever been in Haiti. And um, you have several, um, you have to explain it to them several several times. They can't comprehend it, they can't register it. The first was the first or the second or the third time told them. And today, one of them had to witness it because they, they, they didn't know, because they have a term to say, uh, is it real police or our police? Which means, is that real police or that, oh, these are kidnappers. And then, uh, one of them were out about about see this where we were coming back and we would stop with gun points. And lucky for us, it was it was the police. It was not the kidnappers dressed in police or uniform. She panicked. She spoke all the language that she understand that, that because I, I mean, unfortunately, she was she went she had to understand not because not because that um you know um she don't want to journalist has to go and get things done. But certain times you just have to understand that certain contexts, areas are not, you're just not, you're not allowed to be in these areas at a certain time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can force yourself to, but it has, it has some precautions sometimes. And one of them was, is like today, the panic. I could see the panic. I didn't, I mean, I had to try to keep it down. Come, calm down and, you know, whatever happened, happens and we're just gonna go forward. And um, those are one of the situations today. It's like, you have yeah. to learn the hard way. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys seeing the, the audience questions as well? You are, okay, great. Um, interested to see Marvin's, thank you for- um, Maybe other people are able to see it, but I'm not able- You're not, not seeing it, yeah. Marvin's, um, comparing, am I saying your name, your last name right? Um, who I've been speaking with over the last few weeks, um, he said today, even the policemen feel that they are not safe as this, um, they took his camera today and deleted most of the photos where their faces appear. Um, I'm cognizant that it's seven o'clock and you guys are mostly on deadline. Um, I have a million more questions, but <laughs> um, I mean, I think, First of all, is there Natalie? Is there anything you would like to add um, before you sign off, Jackie? Um, um, I guess I want to follow up. I mean, Evans touched on something, and I know it's a very touchy issue. And it's like the people in the home office, like sometimes you know they mean well, and they they're sending you with a colleague, and they think, oh, okay, this is I'm I'm giving you some protection, but then you know, how do you have that conversation about, no, what you're doing is making me stand out even more. Um, you know, the thing, like when I had my driver, you know, the thing I would do, we were going on the street, that's okay. Today, we're just two Haitians driving down the street. You know, sometimes you just need, you just need that to not stand out, you know? And of course, if you get stopped, then okay, sometimes I will like, okay, I'll say something in English, but listen, I've been attacked by the cop, okay? I, I literally had a police officer come up to me and basically getting ready to slap me. And, and the only thing that saved me in that very moment was I actually knew the phone number of the police chief by, by heart and I started screaming it out. And he did it to me because my colleague who was a white photographer had taken a picture of him hitting this protester, this woman, 
and he couldn't go and he couldn't go after her. I've seen other colleagues, photographers, basically body slammed, you know, by 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 police officers, um, you know, in the midst of this. Like just yeah, it's like all bet, <laughs> you know, are kind of off. Um, and you know, but look, it, you know, if we're not doing this job, then then so much of it, you know, goes untold, you know, and for every story that, you know, somebody gets pissed because we got something wrong. Well, there's the stories where we got something right, you know, or that at least we brought, um, you know, attention to it. And that's where you're always struggling about sort of peeling it back and, and what's the real truth. And sometimes you have to do the same story over and over to peel that layer to get at it because you're not going to get it on the person. You're not going to get it, you know, right with that line. And it's just finding, you know, editors in the States, they love things in black and white and Haiti is just not black and white. I mean, it's, it's, it's just not, it's, it's complicated and it's nuanced and, and, and you need that ability to, to like, as you know, the Haitian times to tell the story behind the story. Mm-hmm.